walking you, let me start walking you through the installation instructions and um and then i'll let dima take over once uh once we've done this so maybe show of hands maybe let me stop sharing the screen before so um so you have to go in this github repository that we discussed earlier um and you have to follow these instructions you have to start the doc here and you have to uh, go to all these different steps uh, get um, go in the external package get the packages get smash you have to install the whole thing one difference with uh, what you've done earlier today uh, which only used the music the hydro and the cooper fry sampler is that now you need to turn on smash when you do a cmake so just by show of hands uh, how many people are done with those steps Okay, so I see a couple of people are done, a couple of people are not done yet. Um, yes, just raise your hand if you're done and uh, leave it raised. I'll just lower everybody's hand later. And you can use the X if you're not done. So a couple of people, so a couple of people are done. Um, are ready to move forward. I saw an X earlier. I would uh, highly recommend if if you're not done, if you just need a couple more minutes. I will just wait a couple more minutes. If you're not done and you're ha actually having trouble with the code, um, th there's something not compiling. I highly recommend that you just ask for help on Slack. We have very capable TAs that can uh, help you with any issues you would have with, with uh, Docker, with compiling the code. So don't hesitate don't, and don't wait too long. Um, ideally, we don't, we don't want to wait uh, too much either. Uh, we, uh, we want people to be able to uh, move forward. All right, so the next step here is um, you go in the Jetscape Docker here in Bell. You make an output directory, and then you'll run Jetscape with a specific input file, the spe specific XML parameter file that you can find here. Um, if you're done with the installation step, please go ahead with this. I know some people have already run this. Ah, okay. My laptop is back to life. Very good. So Dima, I walk Somehow people I walk people through the installation. Can you hear us, Dima? Let me see. Does Dima, anybody hear me right now? We can hear you, but you can't hear us. Okay. Uh -huh. 
setting up the screen. Okay. Ah, awesome. Okay. Dima, I can you hear somebody us? on the school Zoom? Dima? I got some kind of Ubuntu crash. Quite massive. I had to restart the computer, had to use some other graphical system. Uh, I cannot hear you. Well, you can't then hear anything? I have to restart Zoom. <laughs> okay, so for this, everyone, just a couple of minutes and we should iron out our um, technical problems. Um, please um, stay on the line, Should, shouldn't be too long. Okay, say something. I wonder if I Dima, can... can you hear me? Yes. Very good. All right. So I walked people through the first step, which was just uh, compiling Jetscape with Smash and Docker environment. That is so let me, nice. Thank let you. me ask right now. So you can share your screen and everything. Did anybody want, did anybody? not was not was anybody not able to run the first step uh can you uh can you if you still having trouble with that first step can you just show an x uh with the reactions here on on zoom okay there's still one person um please don't hesitate just just um ask on slack um if you have any trouble with that um i'll let dima take over at this point uh, maybe you want to walk people through the, the steps again okay awesome so i am assuming that all of you who are participating in the hands-on part have already docker and already have music and got all the software, get music, get ISS, LDT. So let me go to the Jetscape folder, Jetscape external packages. Here it is. And one of these packages is also Smash. So unlike all this get LDT, get ISS, get music, get Smash is going to execute long because if you look at it, then it's not only make it wider. It's not only getting the code by itself, it's also compiling the library for Smash. So okay, we run get smash. And uh oh, okay, it starts to recompile the library. And I hope that for you it's already compiled. So I don't know if I should compile it for myself because for me it's also compiled. It's starting to recompile now. Then the next step is you want to compile Jetscape together with Smash. And supposedly you have Smash library compiled. Then you go to Jetscape Docker. Not to be on the bottom of the screen. Actually, just Jetscape, right? Okay, and 
here c mic and mic so this is running c mic preparing the compilation and make is supposed to build jetscape together with smash so smash library is compiled already the only thing it has to compile is the roper file then after making sure it is compiling we go to this table so we start from the very beginning now uh, and we open this progress table and by this table i'm going to see who is doing what and who is stuck and where we generally are so right now i see well myself niklas who was testing the code isabel and bill so i'm looking forward to more people adding themselves to the table Am I with you? Are you with me? Is anybody? Dima, so we still see the code compiling. Are you showing another window right now? Uh, I don't know. For me, it already has compiled. OK, yes, it's done. So that's the that's a window we should be looking at. Uh, OK, then. If it compiled for you, I just don't know where where exactly people are at which step. So I suggest everybody to uh, go open this table. So in the very beginning, this to begin, add your name to the table to mark your progress. So here is the table. You click on this table and get here. And so when we don't see what you're what you're showing right now, oh. uh, we only see the terminal. I see. Okay. Should allow me to share the whole screen, right? Do you see the whole screen now? Yes. Yes. Ah, okay. That's very good. Uh, so if you show, yes. So if you show people again how to add their name to the table and how to mm -hmm. write uh, where so they go, are, go to the Smash Hadronic Transport session. It's here in the summer school folder, July 22 transport. And in the very beginning, so to begin, add your name to the table to mark your progress. So I'll click on the table. And yeah, I see already people adding themselves. Hmm. Because I want to see what, what the progress generally is, who is working, and who is where. Because the most annoying part is to, to get everything compiled and running and then it's more more science and understanding than this technical compilation things so okay i see people adding themselves bill andrew gardiev just churchill luis fernando and even comp okay compiled core jetscape that's good compiled jetscape with music and smash so generally it looks like it's Jetscape with music is, and Smash is compilable, usable. Uh, so I see your name in the table, but I don't see that anything compiled. So I'm wondering what's, what's the problem. Okay, yeah, I see Rachel. I'm not sure what's going wrong. I. Uh... I thought I compiled everything fine yesterday, but when I run it, it there seems to be some crash now. So I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. Did you post it on the Slack? I did. Okay, let me see. Okay, I see that I'm sharing with everybody, right? Okay, so aside, where is it? Okay, that should be some earlier message, right? Did anybody reply? Nope. Okay. 
I don't want to hold everything up. Um, please go ahead. I will catch up again. I think, I don't know how long you expect this, the exercise to take, Dima. You still have about an hour. So if you think there's plenty of time, we can, um, we, we can pace ourselves so that uh, you can help people more at the start. If you think you need- Yeah, I would say we don't need that much time for the exercise itself. I just want everybody to, to compile and at least do the first step with running. So go into build folder and making this mesh output directory and running Jetscape to have 10 events. And then it's all physics and analysis and understanding what's happening. Generally at, at my laptop, it took me five minutes to, to get Smash library compiled. And then it took around seven minutes to get Jetscape together with music and Smash compiled from scratch. And then it also took like another five, six minutes to run and get 10 events. So maybe we will wait until 8, 10 and I will try to help people who have problems with compilation. And that's so far just feasible, right? <laughs> so even with the core Jetscape, something goes wrong, right? There's at least one other person who's uh, who's having some issues with the code. So Isabel is not the only one. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I'm sure waiting a couple of minutes is okay. It's okay. If you want, I can, well, let's see. Yeah, I, I prefer to wait here. I prefer to actually have, have people finishing compilations. So there is a question on Slack. There's a bit farther ahead. Um, while we're waiting, do you want me to ask that question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there's at some point you create a file that is part called this dot Oscar. Um, mm -hmm. Does T denote the time after? Uh, does the column T denote the time after the collision of the particle takes to reach X Y Z? So basically, can you clarify what uh, what T is? What's the reference point for T? And uh, how do you distinguish between different events, data in this file? So presumably there are many events within the same file. Yeah, so it is going a bit ahead. So I opened this Oscar file. This is smash output. It is human readable smash output type. Uh, and not exactly sure what the question about, but it's here, it, it says about the format. So this time X, Y, Z, mass, uh, energy, momentum, PDG, ID charge. So is oh, time with respect to the impact of the nucleus? So it's with respect to um, maybe the first cell in the hypersurface. Oh, I see. So the, the question is about the zero, time, time equals zero convention. Yes. So time equals zero convention is when, basically when nuclei first touch. It's not, to be exact, it's when corresponding radii Lorentz contracted of the wood saxon distribution touch. Because in principle, you can have nucleons distributed further than radius. And this is when uh, the radii touch. OK. This is going. And let's say I have multiple events. So, so to, the way to distinguish multiple events in this Oscar uh, format is simply you have event one out of 3999. So, and uh, somewhere yeah. there'll be event two out of 3999. So event one is, this is number of event. Uh, 3999 is actually the number of particles, not number of events. Uh, oh, and OK. And then when I go, well, line 4,000, right? Then here there is. 
for some reason again event one ah that's no that's probably end of event i think with with jetscape smash maybe writing some funny headers for events let me see what's happening further Yeah, so the thing is that for uh, for every event that Smash is starting from the um, sampler, it's like a new event. So Smash is starting counting from scratch. That's why this output is always event one. So the, if you are reading it out with some script, then it's going to be just you know, counting Ah, no, this is correct, actually. So this is still event one for a reason. Uh, this is because it's the same event, but different time. So you see that the first number in the line here is time. So it's still event one, but it's time three for me because it's output is every for me. So if we look for event two, then somewhere further in the file, there should be event two. So it's a big file. Wait, so these are not I'm, so how do you get the final list of the, the list of final particles out of this file? Mm, it's look at, at the look at the later time. So right now there is output at one for me, two for me, three for me, four for me, and so one until hundred for me. So the one at hundred for me is the one you want to Okay. Yeah, but I, I will get to it. But this is what we're actually yeah. going to discuss properly. Okay, sounds good. Okay, let's, maybe um let's let's actually go and yeah, um uh, yeah, just go ahead, I think. Okay, so let's officially start then. Uh this is the Smash Hadronic transport session. What we want to do now is we want to use Smash Hadronic Afterburner. Uh, we want to understand the inputs of Smash, how to control parameters, uh, in particular, how to control resonances, how to control the decays of the resonances, how to switch in, on and off, for example, different reactions. For example, you can run with only resonance formation and decays. You can run with only decays, or you can switch, switch on and off multi-particle reactions, for example. Uh, then we also want to understand smash outputs. This is what people already started to ask. Um, and in the end, we want to have a little physics project that I call life and death of raw resonance. So we're going to explore raw resonances and where, when and where they are born and decayed. So I have seen already lots of people marked their progress in the table. And hopefully the step one, which is mainly compiling codes, is going fine. And if everything is going well, then you should be somewhere, at least here, the code compiled. And as I see from the table, just escape with music and smash. Almost for everybody, it compiled. Then hopefully it also runs. So let's go to the build directory. We are here in the build directory and create to create a directory smash output. Uh, what's going to happen now is is a funny thing. Um, normally, Jetscape has its own output. So if you run Jetscape, um, it uh, it can print particles in several formats that come from Jetscape. And there are Jetscape particle writers, let's say. But Smash has its own outputs as well. So here I'm going to use Smash outputs because I have some scripts for analyzing Smash outputs. And also another reason why I'm going to use specifically Smash outputs, not Jetscape outputs, because there is no way, for example, to output collisions from Jetscape. Jetscape only outputs final particles. And in Smash output, you can output particles at different time intervals in fact you can also output particles at selected times uh, and you can print out collisions as well and we are going to need both 
So okay, let's make this directory smash output. I already have it. Smash output. And I already have output files in it. Well, you will have to run the Jetscape with this configuration, Jetscape user gold, gold XML from the transport summer school. What I forgot to say, if you haven't updated this summer school, go to the summer school and well, git, git pull. So let me do it here. Just, just in case. Okay, it's mainly Jets updates for me, but maybe for you, you're going to have some updates also for transport. And let's go back. Okay, so run Jetscape. You will have to wait for a couple of minutes. I think I will add one column to the table if you were able to run successfully. So we will have here run escape with smash. Let's hope it runs. And now while it runs, or if it already finished, doesn't really matter. What we're going to look at is how all these things are configured. So when we ran Jetscape, um, then this parameter was XML file um, that Jetscape takes. You have seen already this XML file. This is what Chun was showing for his tutorial. And at that time there was hydrodynamics, and in the end, there was also ISS, the soft particleization module. Now I'm also adding smash to it. So let's, let's look in detail what's happening in this file. There is hydro module, this is music, and the only parameter here is freeze out temperature. Everything else is sitting in the music configuration, and we are not changing anything here. What we are changing is something for the particleization module. First of all, notice that there is the parameter called afterburner type. And this is to be consistent with the particle list. And one can choose if particle list is going to come from particle data group booklet 2005, or it's going to be your QMD particle list, or it's going to be smash particle list. So in this case, it's obvious for consistency, you want smash particle list. If you don't choose smash particle list here, it's not going to be such a terrible trouble. In fact, your QMD particle list, um, like smash is not going to crash, for example, but smash is going to shout some warnings that there are some unknown particles, maybe. Then next thing that you care about here is you don't want to perform resonance decays right after sampling. Because if you do, what is going to happen, uh, you are going to sample all the resonances in the end of hydro, you're going to decay them immediately in the particleization. And then you will put all these pions, kaons, and protons and antiparticles because there is nothing else. You decay all the resonances. You will put all those pions, kaons, and protons in smash. And then they will form resonances again by colliding. Now this makes no sense. If you, if you perform resonances in the ISS, then it makes no sense to use the afterburner it's physically. So you, you won't get a crash, you will get meaningful output, but <laughs> you will see physically that something weird is happening. And in fact, this is what I had at some point. I At some point I forgot to perform, to, to change this perform resonance decays to zero. Uh, and I have seen that in the beginning at zero time, I have zero raw resonances. So I was surprised like what's happening. And this is just all resonances decayed in the ISS. You know? So you have to do this for consistency. Ima, do you want to explain why there would even be such an option? Of performing or not performing resonance decays? Yes. Oh, because sometimes you want to run without hadronic afterburner. <laughs> sometimes uh, you want to run just um, music and particleization 
and immediately have resonance decays, and that's it. And for example, you want to test the sampler. That's one possible reason. And for pseudo observable, it's not that bad of an approximation to neglect collisions, right? Depends the, uh, of the accuracy you're looking for, right? So yeah, if you, let's say what happens physically if you don't have smash, if you just perform particleization and uh, look at the particles, so you will probably get proton spectra a bit off. Well, depending on your parameters, of course, but most likely proton spectra will be off. Uh, then the next thing you are going to get resonances wrong. So if you are studying resonance production, they are all going to be seriously wrong. Probably like Rogers resonances will be off, K stars will be off, lambda fifteen twenty will be off, like strongly off. It will get far far too much lambda fifteen twenty. Mm. You will get slightly different V two. This is mostly the effects of afterburner, at least at high energies. Okay, thank you. Then, okay, this was configuration for the soft particleization. Then let's look at the configuration for smash. And for smash, uh, there is end time. So this is when the simulation is going to end in Fermi over C. Then there is an option to have only decays, which would be basically the same thing that just decaying resonances from the ISS. Mm -hmm. But no, we don't want to have just only decays. We want to run the full afterburner. This option to have only decays is interesting because sometimes you want to compare what's the effect of the afterburner, what's the effect of the rescattering. So if you select only decays, then you have only resonance decays. That's it, and then you can compare to rescattering and see the effects of rescattering. All the rest of the config is sitting in three smash config files. And here you can choose which config files you're going to use. So you can see that there is some general config file, particles, and decay modes. Let's have a look first at, at the general config file. So this is going to be this summer school smash config YAML. Let's Let's check it out. Okay, so there are not so many things in this file. And what we are interested in uh, are two sections. There is this collision term section that is currently completely commented out. This is to use default. But in this collision term section, you can switch on and off different kinds of collisions. For example, you can str switch strings off. This will be strings false. And then you won't have any multi-particle production. So for example, if two pions collide, they are not going to make you four particles. Or you won't, you won't have baryon anti-baryon annihilation, which is also important. Yeah, this is also the place where if you want to switch off baryon anti-baryon annihilation, you can switch it off here. Then you can switch all collisions whatsoever. This is. Uh, no collisions, false, you can set it to true and done command. And then you can switch different types of reactions one by one. So for example, you can switch off and on elastic collisions, nucleon, nucleon to nucleon, delta, nucleon, nucleon to nucleon to n star, then nucleon, nucleon to delta n star, and then strange and different strangeness reactions. So KN, 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 K delta, strangeness exchange. Most importantly, what we are going to do here is to select which output from Smash we want. So this is this output section. And output interval 1.0 means that the output is going to happen every one for me, at least for, for particles output. You can see that there are two sections here, particles and collisions. Particles output is, well, particles, only final no means that it's actually going to output every one Fermi and not only final particles at this 100 Fermi end time. Then there is a funny thing here, format, and there are two formats, OSCAR 2013 and binary. 
What would this mean? Uh, so Oscar 2013 is a text output format. It is human readable. Uh, you can open it with your text editor and see what's inside. Uh, and there is binary output format. You can see that they are here simultaneously. This means that you will have output of the same data, the same particles, but in two different formats. Uh, why, why would one do that? Because I, at the same time, I want to show you what's inside of the files uh, and analyzing big amount of data is much better in the binary. Uh, because with, with the same amount of data, the human readable file is going to be a couple of times larger, slower to analyze. So it's, if you are analyzing large amount of data, then your choice is binary, but then you want to see it with your own eyes. That's why this Oscar 2013. Okay. Uh, then let's also look at some other smash input, which is particle list is sitting in the particles txt file. If you open it, you can see some list of hadrons, pi on eta, sigma, rho, omega, and so on. Here you can look at mass and width. This is helpful if you want to, for example, if you want to get rid of some resonance, let's say you, you are not interested in let's say lambda 1520 let me just go and comment out the lambda 1520 and then you have no lambda 1520 in the simulation and you don't have to recompile smash for that which is comfortable and next let's let's have a look at decay modes this is decay modes of the same resonances so for every resonance, let's say I'm going to the same lambda 1520 maybe. Just because I recently studied lambda 1520. And let's say you want to change the branching ratio for some channel. And you know that, for example, this lambda sigma decay channel is Okay, for Lambda 1520, they are pretty well measured. So you don't really want to change because you have actually known values, but let's go to some other resonance. And there is some kind of channel, for example, M K star. There is a decay channel of this resonance in Smash, but here you can see a comment that it is actually not measured. So we don't really know if this decay channel is there or not. And let's say you don't want this decay channel. Again, you, you comment it out, change the branching ratio. The branching ratios are going to be renormalized to one. Okay, are there any questions at this point? Smash inputs and Jetscape inputs. So there are no new questions on Slack. I don't know if anybody wants to raise their hand if they have a question right now. I don't see anything. Okay, so judging by the table, um, generally compiling Jetscape with music and Smash is successful. Running, at least some people finished running. Let's let's have a quick look at the output files. Could you uh, zoom in a little bit? Uh, maybe increase the font in your terminal, and maybe zoom in a little bit on, mm -hmm. or maybe just show one at a time. And uh, uh, th there's been a comment that that the text is a little small. Mm, I see. How can you? I mean, I think if you're on, uh, I don't know if you're on Firefox, you can just increase the zoom a little bit, and it's the text is going to be larger. Yeah. And um, what about the terminal? Do you know some way to increase font on the terminal? I have no idea. Um, there is, if you go in the edit preferences, um, there should be. Okay. There should be a way to, yes. Yeah, so. 
No, not there. A custom font. Yes. If you just click on custom font, you can just increase it to 14. That's going to be pretty big. Okay, somebody commented it's much better. So I think that was, that was good. All right, um, any more question? Raise your hand or ask them on, oh wait, is there a question on Slack? Um, okay, go ahead. There's a technical question on Slack, but I think we'll, we'll answer there. Please go ahead. Yeah, so the, let's look at the outputs. There are two binary files with collisions and particles. And well, you cannot really read binary files and understand what they're. But you can look at the uh, particle list Oscar file. So let's understand what's sitting inside. Uh, wait. Ah, OK. OK, now I will have to increase the terminal a little to see what's in. And you can see some header. And the format is time, x, y, z, mass, energy, and momentum of the particle and PDG code. ID is going to be just one, two, three, four, five, and electric charge. So here it is. And we have asked it to uh, output particles at every single Fermi. So it is. This is going to be one for me time, then x, y, z of the particle, the mass, this is pi on mass because this is pi minus, and then energy and momentum, three momenta. ID, this is going to be this zero, one, two, three, four, and minus one is electric charge, makes sense, this is pi minus. And so on, this goes for this 3,909, 99 particles. And then the next one is already at two for me. So every for me, there is some output. And then I go three, four, five, six, seven. So after 100 for me, there should be event two. Yeah, this is 100 for me. And here it is. And then it's it's printing again event one <laughs> because uh, well for smash it's the counter is reset. The sampler sampled something new and then smash started from scratch here. So if if you are reading this out, then you are you just have to put some counter in your analysis script. I don't really recommend you to analyze the human readable files. You can, but why would you? It's less efficient than binary. Hmm. One can look at the collisions list. Oh, not the binary. Which is what they want full event history. Here you can see it's just collision after collision, interaction in one particle out two particle. This is some, well, this is supposed to be density, but it's not printed out here. A weight is either width or the cross section. And this is going to be either partial width or partial cross section. Type, you will have to look at the, at the smash user guide. This type five is probably meaning decay. And well, at time two, two for me, some, some raw decayed into two pions. This is what I can learn from this, this lines. Again, the particle format is the same here. This time x, y, z, mass, energy, momentum. Okay, any questions at this point?
there's still I that's there was one question on Slack. I don't know if it's resolved. It was a bit technical. Um, I don't know if well, let me just say if anyone is still having problems and they asked on Slack, but it wasn't resolved. Maybe it's a good time to raise your hand and just as a question. Uh -huh. So for somebody, this analyzing smash output didn't work. So probably some script is faulty. Okay, I don't see any extra questions. Um, I think some of the yeah, questions are a bit later in the tutorial. So please go ahead and um, people will ask questions. Um, we go. Let's, let's finally go to physics. So uh, we have run Smash with different types of reactions, with different kind of rescattering, with resonance formation, resonance decays, uh, two to two reactions, strings, and let's look at one thing let's explore what's happening to rho zero resonance in smash it actually has some some scientific value uh, it is not very obvious process so we uh, we can ask many questions about resonances in general and although it is in principle a reasonably well explored topic there, there were a couple of publications with about resonance productions in SLHC and the trick, there is, in my opinion, there is still something to explore there. And let's pay attention to Rho zero. So from from our output and from our simulation, this is just 10 events. So can we uh, can we learn, for example, what reactions create and destroy Rho zero, not only in general, because in principle there can be many reactions, but what reactions in practice in the concrete collision um, are the most important for a zero. Then let's say for every one of this reaction, are they in equilibrium or not? In the sense that is the rate of forward reaction equal or approximately equal to the rate of the re reverse reaction? Or maybe not. Uh, then out of out of resonances that were sampled, how many actually end up in the detector? And how does quantity ending up in the detector compare to the quantity of sampled resonances? Because sampled resonances are the resonances at freeze out at temperature 150. So is it the same quantity that ends up being measured? Then out of detectable resonances, where, where and when are they born? Where do they typically decay? This is life and death question of the row zero resonance where where are they born and where do they die then you can imagine that sometimes um, the mechanism of disappearance of row zero is row zero colliding with something else making some higher resonance let's say let's let's say some n star let's say row colliding with nucleon making some kind of n star and then this n star decays into something else into n and pi on, and row disappears so how often does this kind of process happen, for example? Then sometimes raw regenerates. So there, there was no raw, uh, and then raw was creating in the process, created in the process of uh, afterburner simulation, for example, from two pions. So how important is this? Now, this kind of questions, and there can be more questions. I'm pretty sure you can ask your own research questions and I would definitely like if you suggest some question like this in the chat, some kind of meaning, meaningful question about row zero production. And in the meanwhile, we are going to analyze what we have in our output. Well, this is a few helpful variables here, which I'm going to put here. Results folder is going to be set of results. Let's make sure that we actually have this folder. Okay, we even have this command. And now for for the very beginning, let's just test that collisions binary file is something meaningful for which I have this quick read 
script. And okay, it's already there is some problem for me. Why? That's weird. Okay. Everything exists. So I find I find if you put a full pass of the there's Q where there's cutable is, it will fix the problem. If you put what? The four the four directories, like the home ah. slash home jscape something okay. instead of the tilde. Mm -hmm. So let's let's do it the following way. I understand what's happening. And then let's do the transport folder equals like this. And yeah, let's home. Let's have home Jetscape user and then the summer school. And then let's have it. Okay, thanks. Okay, so this is just quick analysis of what's inside of the file. Just going through events and checking how many interactions there are in every event. So you can see that binary file is something meaningful and not garbage, that it is not a result of some crash. Because with binary file, you cannot just open and see with your own eyes. So this is what you have to do. And yeah, it's 10 events with some meaningful amount of interactions inside. So let's analyze them. And for that, I'm just copying. This one, it's a big script which uh, takes as an input which reactions you want to count. So there are some, some reactions that I found interesting in my research. And I want to count how many reactions of this type are going forward and backward. So for example, pi plus pi minus go into row zero and row zero, how many times it is decaying into pi plus pi minus and so on for all these reactions. I'm copying it here. And hopefully, I don't know, in 30 seconds, I get a result. Mainly what I want to see from, from this analysis is what are the most important production channels for all? What are the most frequent reactions, let's say? This is answering one of the physics questions I have written above. Is there any progress? Or oh, it's Henning. Okay, so it has printed something. If you look at the output, most common production channels for row zero, this is some frequency measure that is printing. Very, very expectedly, the most frequent reaction is with pi plus pi minus. And then the next ones are this, with this A1 decaying into pi rho and pi rho forming A1. Then pi and rho forming omega. This is actually for, you might be surprised if you're looking at this because why would omega decay into pi rho? Omega normally decays into three pi ions, right? Mm -hmm. But in Smash, you have detailed balance enforced, which means that, um, if you have a three-body decay, it's intentionally substituted by a chain of two-body decays. Like instead of omega decaying into three pions, it's omega decaying into pion and draw, and then draw decaying into two pions. And that is because, because you want to have the back reactions. Because three pions, there is no three to one reactions implemented in Smash. And in general, it's very hard to to collide three particles. So instead, we have a chain of two two to one reactions. So pi and pi and colliding making rho, and then pi and rho colliding making omega. So we can have the tailed balance principle in place. Then there, there is some output here. So in the results folder, you, you should be able to see now 
reactions rate output mid rapidity and for all these reactions there are reaction rates uh, if you are interested uh, you can also analyze you can answer one of the questions and one of the questions was other reactions equilibrated so let's say uh, is the rate of pi on pi on to rho formation the same that rho to pi on pi on decay well let's have a look rate and well there is there is some output file which for every reaction there is this is just list of time time moments and this is counter of reactions and by just visually looking at it i would say that the the number of pro decays into pion and pion is slightly larger than number of formations but of course you have to analyze it properly to say anything to the error bars Okay, then uh, I don't think I'm interested in the multiplicity versus time right now. What I want to do is mm, analyze the collision graph. Okay, and there is some problem there. Why would that be? Ouch. Like so, was anybody able to actually run this successfully? Let me have a look. Maybe one suspect is this. No. Okay. Then we are in trouble. Or what's happening here? I didn't find any lamps. Why? Some older version. Wow. Okay, I wonder. So probably nobody was was able to run this with collision graph, right? Let's see. yeah if you if you don't do the cd result folder it works <laughs> if you okay. just run the in the build folder go one layer up and then just type the second command it works Oh, so it just wasn't finding anything. That's why I'm okay. okay. Okay, now let's open a new tab, which is without without Docker. Go to this Jetscape Jetscape Docker Jetscape build and let's look at the results of this collision graph analysis ah 
Okay, so now now we actually have to go to this results folder. This is where it is. Dima, just to give you an idea, there's about 12 minutes left. Yeah, we are basically close to the end. Okay, very good. Well, there is some some new issues with the buffs. Oh, I see it. It has written this density matrix, destiny matrix. In the in the folder that is not results. Here it is. Okay. So now I want to move this. So now we have generated a matrix of outcomes for for different rock collisions. What was what was happening there is the collision file for was analyzed for to find out where each raw resonance was born and where it decayed. So for every resonance that was present in the simulation, doesn't matter if it was in the end or it was was born somewhere from the hydro and then decayed in the middle or collided. Uh, so for every such row zero resonance, we are looking at what happened to it in the beginning and what happened to it in the end. So we are going to have um, on the left side possible ways to be born for row zero and on the right possible ways to be destroyed or maybe just end up in the detector. So maybe it is born from decay of higher resonance, not originating from hydro, then born from decay of some higher resonance originating from hydro, born from some formation as the spion pion to raw, or maybe it is it was the resonance sampled directly from hydro. And possible final outcomes is it ended up detectable or formed some higher resonance, or maybe just decayed in some pion pion and then one of the pions collided and if one of the pions collided then you cannot detect raw anymore because you detect by invariant mass and then one more possibility that is super tiny here is that it reacted inelastically this almost never happens so there is looks like in smash this oh, only one reaction happened when raw collided with something and reacted inelastically so what can you conclude from this kind of diagram? So for example, uh, is that out of all the rows during the simulation, only, only part of them, and it's like what uh, around one quarter ended up detectable. On the other hand, it's uh, if you count how many rows And it's detectable. It's approximately the same amount that raw sample. So in this in this kind of diagram, you have to you have to go into into multiple loops. So for example, original raw born directly from hydro, and then it formed the high resonance. So we come here, and then we go back here, born from decay of higher resonance. And then we again have raw, and then maybe this raw again form, form some higher resonance, and so on. So it's from this diagram, it's sometimes hard to judge about the final particles, but it's interesting to see concerning what's happening to different rows. So for example, uh, out of out of detectable rows, out of final rows, what fraction is coming from, from the very beginning from the hydro? And you can see that it's rather small fraction. This is the row zeros that come directly from hydrodynamics. And end up being detectable. So maybe 
10, maybe 15%. And then out of final detectable residuals, uh, some of them are also coming from some resonance originating from hydro. So altogether, this and this originate from hydro. So altogether, rows originating from hydro are like maybe 20%. And most of them are actually coming from some uh, pi pi to row formation or coming from some higher resonance decays that were not originating from hydro. So it's it's a multiple scattering picture. It's not just, I don't know, one, one scattering, uh, not just row born from hydro, or not just two pines born from hydro collided and you get row. It looks like there is. There are multiple scatterings happening. Okay, so let me show you one last thing. All this, all this output that we generated is supposed to be in the results folder. And there is not, not that much because, because why? Uh, because I screwed up something with the folders. It's probably here. Yeah, so the, the output is is partly here. Like resonance is dn to dy, resonance is pt spectrum, resonance is v2. So I'm not analyzing it now, but in principle you can look into those files and analyze them and understand what's sitting there. So for example, here just out of I would. So it seems that from 10 events, no, this is too little. This must be something. There must be something wrong here. It's probably from the last event. Okay, so let me look at the table. How far? I see that not people didn't get get very far unless unless I don't see this table properly. So it looks like lots of people generated smash output. But analyzing it was a problem. Was it? And ideally, I would like you to make some physical conclusion, but I see that not many people will analyze something. So with this, let's let's then finish and the, the homework is going to be well using the script or maybe not using the script, maybe using your favorite script and smash output, answer one, one of these questions. What can you say about raw production at star energies, gold, gold collisions? Thank you, Dima. Uh, do you think you'll be able to keep an eye on, on Slack today if people have more questions? Yes, it looks like I also have to correct a few things with the paths here in the instructions. Okay, very good. Um, like this results folder was problematic. Did anyone have any further questions for Dima? You're welcome to just raise your hand and ask your question out loud. I'm not seeing anything that's in the Slack. Some people are still having um, all kinds of more technical problems that I think might be easier uh, to solve directly on um, directly on Slack. Um, if there's no more question, is there anything else, Dima, you want to say? Um, to close oh, the session. Oh, I, I just want to thank everybody 
for listening, following to the instructions, and hopefully uh, you can use this in future to analyze some physics and understand something new. I have to say, this was a very nice plot that you produced where you can see the origin and the, the final state of all these, uh, all the rows. I think it's, it's very easy to visualize a lot of information for this plot. So thank you. I think it was a very good idea. If um, you're curious about this last plot, the, the, the Python script that produced this plot is actually a very simple one. It's, if you look at it, it's just visualizing a matrix. There, there is I a file with the matrix and it is a visualization of metrics. It's called Zenki diagram or Zenki diagram. I see. Um, what's the, what's, is, is that a Python library? Yes, this is this Plotly. Plotly, I see, okay, I see. Okay, very good. Well, I, I think I'll use that in the future. Uh, that's a nice feature. Okay, yeah. all right. Thank you again, Dima. Thank you, Sean. Uh, for uh, the hands-on session here this morning. I don't know if the organizers wanted to add anything to the session.